What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anas. I'm a fourth year medical student studying in London. And in today's video, I want to talk a bit about how you can use the iPad Pro for all aspects of studying. So there are loads of videos out there on YouTube, including some of my own that talk a bit about the writing experience on the iPad using the pen on the screen. You can change the color of the pen. You can change the highlighter tool. But this year has been slightly different for me. I've had fewer lectures and it's been more to do with, you know, small group work, independent study sessions, small teaching sessions. So I've had to find ways of using using the iPad for much more than just simply a replacement for pen and paper. So hopefully this video should be useful and giving an idea of how you can use the iPad for much more than just writing on it. One of the main issues I found with note taking during a teaching session is that sometimes it can distract from whatever the consultant or the doctor is saying during that session. And this is especially true if you're constantly trying to change color of the writing, you're trying to highlight, you're trying to make it as neat as possible, all whilst listening. And sometimes when that goes too far, you might completely miss everything that they're saying and you're not getting it down on your sheet. So instead of trying to get things perfect on the first go, I'll take advantage of the editability on the iPad Pro and I'll just write things down in a kind of semi-neat fashion and trying to write down at a speed which allows me to keep up but also stay focused during the session. So in a teaching session, they might be talking about loads of different topics. So I'll just write things down on one page or I'll use multiple pages on Notability as well. And it doesn't have to be that neat. It will all be in black color. Sometimes it will be in bullet points, sometimes in numbers, sometimes it's just kind of sentences, but it doesn't really matter. So after the teaching session, I might spend 10 minutes just kind of moving things around in a way that makes sense. So I can select text and move it into one page. I can resize it to make it smaller so it fits in. I can also change the color of the text by selecting it. I can also kind of make the writing thicker. I can make the writing thinner. I can highlight, I can do all of that after the session so that it doesn't distract me from whatever the person is teaching. And what you'll find is that you can actually zoom in quite a lot into one page. So if you resize some of that text to make it smaller, you can move it to the corner and move some other text to the other corner and just move things around and then you can actually fit quite a lot into one page, probably a whole lecture into one page. You can fit a whole teaching session into that page as well. And for me, it's about having a clear idea of the structure of the content and making that page almost like an image of what you understand and how different topics and how different kind of ideas relate to each other. Uh, and that's not something you can do by just note taking during a teaching session. So in addition to teaching sessions, a large part of the year also included something called OSCE practice. So if you're a medic, you already know what I'm talking about, but if not, in simple terms, it just meant that oftentimes we'd have to work in pairs or sometimes with multiple people during a session. One person would act as a patient, the other would act as a doctor, and the person acting as a doctor would have to take a history, for example, a chest pain history, an abdominal pain history, or give some kind of information. And sessions like these are all about feedback. So in order to make these sessions as useful as possible, I would use an app called CamScanner in order to scan mark schemes from the book into the iPad and then I'd move them into Notability. Then I can take that mark scheme and resize it to make it smaller and then I'd have additional space on the side to kind of write down additional feedback or the mark scheme would also have things I can tick. So if we needed additional information for that session, you can open up Google and search, for example, sepsis protocol or search a chest x-ray or an audiogram, take an image of that and also add it into that same page. So I have the mark scheme, I have the image, I have whatever management for the condition as well. And then if I'm the person who's marking, I can go through that mark scheme and say, okay, for example, they've asked about vomiting, they've asked about vertigo, they've asked about headaches, they've asked about ear pain, and then whatever they don't ask, then I can kind of cross that out. And then if we get towards the end of the station, then I can show them that x-ray and they can interpret the x-ray and they can write down feedback on that sheet as well. What's also quite sick about this is I can take this page and I can duplicate it multiple times. So if, for example, I'm working with more than one person, or for example, it's a circuit, I'm working with multiple people, then I can have one page that is dedicated to each person during that session. So each person will get their own feedback. And also this works in two ways. So if then I'm gonna be the one acting as a doctor and the other person needs to mark me and give me feedback, then I can give them the iPad and then they can use that mark scheme also to give me feedback that way. 
key part of being a student is also practicing questions. So A-level students do past papers and practice questions. That way, university students also do past papers or just practice Anki questions or multiple choice questions on a book. Active Recall is what most students use and that's in the form of practice questions. And the iPad can also be useful in this regard. So if you're an A-level student, for example, you can download a past paper and directly import it to Notability. And you can do the past paper as if it was a sheet of paper answering the questions on the iPad screen itself. And when it comes to marking that past paper, you can also download that mark scheme and then split screen. So you have the past paper on one side, you have the mark scheme on the other side, and then you just go through marking that past paper as well. You can do the same thing with Anki. And I've seen other people do the same thing. Is that you have Anki on one side and all the flashcards there, and then you have Notability or OneNote or whatever note taking app you use on the other side. And then you go through the flashcard, the flashcard comes up, it gives you a question, and then you write down the bullet points or the answer on the other side, and then you can check your answer and just keep doing it that way. Um, and also for medical students, oftentimes we'd use multiple choice books or multiple choice websites like PassMed or PassTest, so there's loads of them out there. And what you could do is you can have the multiple choice website on one side and go through the questions, and then also you can have Notability on the other side. And then when you get a question wrong, then you can write down the information on Notability. Alternatively, if you have a multiple choice book, you can import it and put it into Notability, have it on one side, and then you just tick whatever answers you've gone through. And then you can import the book again, open up the mark scheme on the other side, and then obviously mark it as you go along. You can also kind of write down the explanation for the question onto that other sheet as well. So you kind of have a note taking question stuff there yeah so in brief i hope that gave a kind of a, a good idea of how i've been using the ipad pro this year specifically um and i hope you found this video useful if you liked the video then like the video comment like subscribe Ew. Ew.